And if we are continuously speaking about the coming of the Lord, well, the second coming, we don't want it to confuse. There is something that begins, the what it begins, the second coming of Lord Jesus begins with the rapture. Rapture, what it begins, and finally there is some process that has to take place, and finally it's going to come down on earth. There are a lot of scriptures that will help us. But then, what I want you to know is, we are very near to that time. Yeah. The reason is, there are a lot of things that are confirming that the time is very, very near. I, uh, there is a, 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 a site, a website called Signet. If you go there, there's, uh, in, the, in the list of items, there is something called about the temple, concerning temple. And they say, everything is ready and they even gave a date when the temple will be built and it will be uh, consecrated. I don't know how they have come with the date, something like it looks like somewhere next year or God, I think next year somewhere and they're going to have the temple ready because this time the temple will not take 40 years as it took when it was built by King Herod because these people have everything ready, even I've read about it. There's an institute called Temple Mount Institute. They have actually prepared every component needed to build a temple. Now, if you see the Bible, and you find that even the, when the first temple was built, you'll see there, in the site of the temple, God commanded strictly they should not use hammer and chisel. You know what it means? You cannot use hammer and chisel and build the magnificent temple. How it would be possible? And the temple, temple was built with huge stones, huge stones and stone structures. And the stones need to be shaped, perfected, and brought and be placed there. What does that mean? Means they have actually prefabricated every stone, not in the side of the temple, but far away from the temple. In fact, uh, the stones that are used on the temple mount are not even found in the close vicinity. They have been brought from some distance. And they were actually, uh, they shaped them, they, they put them in the right shape and they brought them. And what you call as today's technology engineers will know that prefabricated technology. If you see in Dubai, the, <clears throat> the metro, you know how they built it. Every piece was fabricated elsewhere and they just got connected. And that's why in three or four years' time, they finished the whole project where in Delhi it took about 10 years. Even they use the same technology. Well. And today the temple can be built instead of a couple of months they can't build the whole temple because the whole, the everything needed for the temple is ready. What this tells us and takes us to understand because once the temple is ready and the sacrifice will begin, the sacrifice has been halted. How many years? Almost 2,000 years. From the time Jesus was sacrificed on the cross, if you see, it's very interesting to understand. There was no sacrifice afterwards that was done in Jerusalem. Do you know that? No sacrifice after that. Because Romans were holding it and there was no sacrifice. The temple is already down. There's no temple, no temple, no sacrifice. Jesus is the temple. Jesus is the real sacrifice. But these Jewish people are still waiting to build a temple and offer sacrifice. Eventually, they will begin to do that, but that will be stopped by a man called Antichrist. And that will be soon. But, as Pastor Arun told us, we will not be here on earth at that time. Either way. Which way? One way, you are caught in rapture and gone to be with the Lord. Or secondly, maybe God calls any one of us early for any reason. He knows all those things. We don't know. When the rapture will be exactly, no one knows the date. Not anything else, but then we know is somewhere near. And why do we tell you this? Why are we trying to bring this to your, you know, trying to pour it into your hearts? Because we got to be prepared. Last week, I began with you from John, book, uh, Epistle of John. I went through chapter 1 and 2 and I reached uh, up to chapter, uh, verse uh, uh, 17. And I said that the world is passing away and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. The whole thing is, 
Everything will pass away. The world and the sin and the lust of it, the glory of whatever he takes glory will be passing away. But what is going to remain is, but he who does the will of God will abide forever. This is your part, your share and my share in Lord Jesus Christ. And we are, we, means God has placed us as pastors. We have only one work to do in the church. The church is that not even a single person should miss the rapture. The rapture comes in first. Even before you are called and we are called, no one should miss the rapture. The whole idea and the whole responsibility is upon us on earth. Hallelujah. You understand that? And we are trying to put into your heart and prepare. And you have to receive the word and prepare yourself. Amen. Are you with me this evening? And if you neglect anything, we are not going to be responsible. God is not going to be responsible. And then there's something called happens left behind. And when you are left behind, then begins the seven years of tribulation, which is not easy for anyone to go through. Even if you know the name of Jesus, more tribulation for you. And if you don't know the name of Jesus, another kind of tribulation for you. But then, if you accept tribulation at the time and try to live okay, you can be in the kingdom of God. But it's not easy. That's not easy. Alright? So let's go and a few, few more uh, verses that will tell us even towards the rapture. The few things God has put into my heart and through the scriptures. And verse 18. Little children, it is the last hour and you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Even now, many Antichrists have come. By which we know that it is the last hour. Now, who is Antichrist? What is Antichrist? Let us know a little bit. We have been talking about it, but I'll take a little bit quickly into it. And verse 19 says, They went from us, but they were not of us. But for if they had been of us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that they, may, they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. They will look like, I mean, the Antichrist will look like a Christian perhaps. And also will look like a man is close to Jewish people. He will also be friendly with the Muslims and others in the world. They will act like so nice guys. They will he, let me say he. And he is going to come, but then let's understand today the spirit of Antichrist is already at work. That's what John is telling. Many Antichrists went out from us, he says, from among us. In those days, when John was living, or all the apostles were living, many people really did come up and say, I am Jesus. Many people declared themselves to be Jesus. And in due course, we have heard many people, in, even today, you know, some people who call themselves Jesus. In India, we have somebody called Satya Sai Baba in Andhra Pradesh. And he says, I am Jesus, I am incarnation of Jesus. He's still living. And he's saying, you have, you have to look to me. I am the actually incarnation of Jesus. That's what he says. Other than him, in many parts of the world, you'll find there are people who are declaring their Jesus. Or in other various ways, they are deceiving people. But for those who know the word of God and those who are led by the spirit of God, there is no reason, there is no reason for them to be deceived unless you are not walking in the spirit. The word of God as it leads you to understand that. Verse 20, but you have anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. Today, God wants you to know one thing. We are not trying to bring fear or anxiety in your hearts. But only to be prepared. Why you should not have fear is you have anointing. If you have received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and the day you have received Him as a personal Savior, according to Acts chapter 2 38, God has put His Holy Spirit inside of you. And many of you not only have that initial uh, uh, infilling the Holy Spirit, but you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit where you have experienced the power of God coming upon you and 